to look and remember what I was doing. It's horrific, but I had to go through what I had to go through to get to where I am. When I was young, I grew up in Chicago. Mom, she had a strict hand. Stop stealing, don't lie, but I did it all. I think at the age of nine or 10, I discovered marijuana through my mom's cigarette pack. My sister, bless her heart, light of my life. Rosie was a year and a half older than me, probably a year and a half shorter, but a whole year and a half tougher. She took care of me and she, boy, go get one of them cigarettes out your mama's pack. Okay. Boom. That's the wrong one. What is that? You told me to go get it. <laughs> I'm following my big sister. That's my heart. Oh, they were, like I say, they was this <laughs> two peas in a pod. <laughs> I always felt guilty because I brought my sister out and that split them, that left him in Chicago by himself with my mom. You know, I felt a little abandoned because she used to fight a lot of my battles. And I always sometimes think, well, maybe that's why he did some of the things he was doing, you know, acting out, because he was, he was separated. That's when I got my first criminal record, Boxcar Davis, knowing how to open the boxcars in the railroad tracks. Everybody thought the older guys was the mastermind. How you gonna corrupt that little boy like that? He's the littlest. Oh, I'm the ring leader. Now I'm older, doing more crime, doing marijuana, but my drug of choice was that alcohol and the marijuana and then crack. If I was to see enough cans in one spot, I would pick them up, turn them into the recycle. Really all you need to get a piece of crack is a $5 and that'll get me started and I'll be on my way. So this is the park, and this is where I would come and sit and smoke my crack, drink my beer, smoke my cigarettes, and I know everybody out there. It was very embarrassing for me to be around any of my relatives that could see me doing anything, so I stayed away. My sister Rosie, she didn't say she was battling cancer. She just said she didn't feel good. She passed in 2016. She was gone, and I was in the hospital. And so, you know, he was kind of like on his own. He had done some really ugly things while I was sick that Christmas. I'm just fiending, and I stole laptops, coffee makers, printers. Everything under the tree, went into the crack man, smoked. My sister laying in the hospital, she dying. I didn't care. After all the crack glory, it came down, looked at me. What have you done? This is why you stay away from the people you love. I had a truck, old vintage K5. I just cracked out and went in. I just went and crawled in it and wanted to die. My nephew, he found me in that abandoned vehicle over in Oak Park. All he said was, Uncle, what are you doing? I said, I just want to die, Dale. He said, you're hungry? I said, yeah. He said, I'm going to go get you some menudo. He know that's my favorite food. I just pawned this printer. I just sold this printer his mama bought him. And even the puppies are full. That's the power of God. They told me to call Salvation Army. And I'm thinking, ain't that that bell ringing, people? By the grace of God, they said, come on down. In the Salvation Army, everything they designed is to lead you to Christ. Christ's going to show you the way. 
they explain that you are a child of God and he already had a plan for you. Get out of his way, follow his will. It's such a simple thing. They uh, had an electrical program which is gonna open up avenues for people like me. I've actually witnessed when I put Jesus and God on my side, I'm invincible. So I get out the way, I let God guide me. I did everything possible to do drugs and live. It didn't work, so I had to quit the drug. And the power the drugs had over me, the only power that was able to even give me any kind of relief was God. The only prayer I even half knew was half of the serenity prayer. We say, God grant me the serenity, accept the thing. So I said, God grant me. And that's all I knew. That was the day I first believed. See, I didn't ask for nothing. I didn't know nothing to ask for, but I wanted to come to him. And I've been following ever since. Now I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but that's why I keep it simple. What would Jesus do? If I can't answer that, I ain't gonna do it. I did some terrible things, but the hardest thing for me is forgiving myself. God forgave me, so I gotta keep trying to forgive myself. I think he's gonna be just fine. And if he stands with me, who can stand against me? If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it. We are always posting content, so don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for helping us share change.